Today, I'm going to show you how to automatically change someone's team when they exit an area, just like escaping from Jailbreak's Jail. To start, make sure you have the Explorer and Properties enabled, which can be turned on through the View tab at the top left of the screen. Also make sure that you have the Teams folder or Service, which can be turned on by going to Model at the top left, clicking on Service, and adding it from this list. Now, click on the plus button over the Teams folder and add in at least two teams. I'm going to change their names to Police and Prisoner, but you could change them to whatever you'd like. Now select one of the teams and go down to the property section. Make sure they have different team colors and this is what will allow us to swap between these two teams. So I'm going to change the team color of the police team to lapis and I'm going to change the prisoners one to bright green. Now go on over to the model tab at the top left and insert a spawn point. This is what we'll use in order to test what we create later on in the video. So I'm going to select it and scroll down to its properties and disable the neutral setting. If the neutral setting is enabled, so if it has a check mark, then anyone will be able to spawn there no matter what team they're on. So I'm going to disable this, and I'm also going to enable the allow team change on touch properties so when we step on it, we'll be swapped to the team. And I'm going to change the team color here to the team that I want this spawn point to be for. So if I want it to be for the police team, I have to put in the police team's team color. So since their team color is lapis, if I go into the spawn point and I change the team color here to lapis, anyone on the police team can spawn right here. If we go to the top, the brick color is completely different and that's just what it looks like. You can change it to whatever color you'd like. So if I select dark blue, it will still work as long as the team color is set up properly. I'm going to do the same thing here for the prisoner team, so I duplicated it by holding Control D or Command D on Mac, and I'm going to change it to a different brick color, but I'm going to make sure the team color is bright green, which is the exact same one as the prisoner team. Now we can add in a part into the workspace here by clicking part at the top left through the home or model tab, and we can continue. Now we are about to write the script, which can also be found through the important link section in the description, but take note that you will need to change things inside of the script to make sure that it works for you. And now take note that this also will not be the most efficient way that you could do this, so I am not going to be using magnitude checking or region 3 or ray casting. I can put resources for those methods down into the description below, but I'm making this tutorial more geared towards those who are looking to implement a simple solution for this into their game. So just keep that in mind moving forward into the video. So now I'm going to select this part here and scroll down to its properties. I'm going to make sure it is anchored and I'm going to disable the can collide property so that people can walk through it. I'm now going to change its name. You can change it to whatever you'd like, but I'm going to call it escape brick. Now hover over the plus button on it and add a script inside. You can get rid of the text in here and we can get started. To start, reference the players service, which contains a list of every single player in the game. Now this is what is known as a variable. So we're making a word equal to something else so that we don't have to type this out every single time we want to talk about it later in the script. I'm going to do the same thing with the team service. So I'm going to say local teams is equal to game get service teams. And now I'm going to reference the police and prisoner teams, which are directly inside of the folder. So I'll say local police is equal to teams dot police and local prisoner is equal to teams dot prisoner. Now make sure that the capitalization is exactly the same or else it will not work. And now I'm going to reference the part that will need to be touched in order for someone to swap teams. So I'm going to say local escape brick, and you can change the name of the variables to whatever you would like. Just make sure that they are made equal to the correct thing. So in most cases, you will have to type out its exact name with the same spelling and capitalization. But in this case, for the escape brick, we can do something different. We could say script.parent. And this is because the script is directly inside of the escape brick, which makes it the script's parent. So if I were to click on this script and I go down into the properties section, where it says parent, it says escape brick. So if you ever see anything saying script.parent, then you can either reference this property over here or you can check whatever is directly holding it. 
So now I'm going to go down to the next line and create a function, and this is going to allow us to make something happen. So I'm going to say escape brick dot touch. So whenever the escape brick is touched, we can connect it to a function. And inside of these parentheses at the end here, we can add in what is called a parameter, and this will allow us to pass data into the function. So inside here, I'm going to say touch. So you could change it to whatever you want. I typically write hit in here, which is one of the most common placeholders for things such as this. And what this is basically doing is whenever something touches the escape brick, it's going to run a function and whatever touches that brick can be referenced by saying touch. So if we go on over here and let's say inside of my character, my left arm decided to touch the brick. What would happen is that inside of the script here, if we were to do something like saying print touch, it would print the name of whatever touched it, so it would be left arm. So now if we change this over here to something else, we can reference the players because we only want this to activate or continue if a player touched the brick. So I'm going to say local player, not to be confused with the player service up at the top, is equal to players get player from character touch.parent. And I'll make sure that if you're saying touch.parent here, that is the same as the parameter we put here, or else it will not work. So now what this is going to be doing is we're defining the word player as checking if the parent of whatever touched the part is a player. So again, if we go back over here to the example with my character model, if we click on the left arm and we go into the properties, the parent is my character. And because the character is technically owned by my player, which would be inside of the player's service when I'm in the game, we could use that in order to check what has touched the escape brick. So now if we go on over to the next line, we could say if player then, and then we could continue on from here. So that means that the rest of the script here will only continue if the script determines whatever touched the escape brick is in fact a player. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to add an end because every if then statement needs an end and this is also the same with a function. All right, so if it is a player that touched the brick, then what? Now we are going to check what team they're on. So actually I'm going to add another team in here. So I'm going to duplicate the prisoner team. I'm going to change it to really red and I'm going to name this criminal. And this is going to be the team that the player gets swapped into. So actually, we do not need the police team up here. So I'm going to change this to say criminal, and I'll say teams.criminal. So now what I'm going to do here is write another check to see what team the player is on. And if they are on the pris prisoner team, then they'll get put onto the criminal team. Because if someone who's on the police team walks through and touches this brick, we don't want them to be put onto the criminal team if they're just chasing after someone. So now if I go into the script, so if it is a player, then if that player, so if player dot team is equal to prisoner, so if they are on the prisoner team, and actually it's two equal signs, then we can make something else happen. So then we're going to change their team to something else. Player dot team is now equal to criminal. So now what this is doing is whenever the escape brick is touched, it's going to run a function. Once that function runs, it's going to check if whatever touched it is a player, and then from there, it's going to check if their team is the prisoner team, which is what we defined up here. And if that is the case, then they are going to be put under the criminal team. So if I go over here and I'm going to click on home, click on the arrow here right under run, and I'm going to click on play here. So I'm going to start on the prisoner team. And whenever I touch this, I should be put onto the criminal team. So there we go. I got put onto the criminal team. And now if I'm on the police team and I try and step on this, it's not going to swap teams. So now that we have this, we can scale it upwards and make it invisible so that people don't see it. So what I'm going to do now is go on over here into the workspace and I'm going to select the part and I'm going to go into the property section and I'm going to change the transparency. So I'm going to change it to 0.5 just for right now and then I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it this way. I'm going to move it closer to the tent and I'm going to scale it. And now you can put this around the area that people have to pass in order to be changed team. So let's just say I did it like that. So then I could duplicate it now. I'll move it over this way. And then we'll just say that from here we go on and we continue surrounding the entire tent. 
and you could do that for your area. So now I'm going to select these. I'm going to go back and do the properties and change the transparency to one so it's completely invisible. And now if I, let me just disable auto assignable here so I only spawn on the prisoner team. And if I play here, as soon as I walk out of the tent and reach the area, then I should be automatically placed onto the criminal team. And as you can see over here at the top, it put me onto the criminal team and it worked as intended. If you have any questions or if anything wasn't working for you, please comment down below and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. I do have a tutorial playlist which you can find through the card at the top right of the screen or down in the description that contains a bunch of other tutorials that vary in difficulty as well as in the topic. So no matter your skill level, I would suggest giving it a look. And if it doesn't contain anything that you're interested in, feel free to leave a suggestion for anything that you would like to see me do in the future, as I'm always looking for more things to create. Anyway, hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Hope to catch you next time, and bye bye